was the night before Christmas. And all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Not even a... Hold up. Slow your roll. It was Christmas Eve night, with no money in sight. Plenty people sit down wondering. Everybody in fear. Asking themselves the question, did love disappear? Lime shop and decorate for Christmas? Or be bored, broke, and stuck at home? Which would you prefer? I would think the former, but it came from all over the world and it landed in our corner. Lockdown in order and disrupting everybody's lives. First COVID-19 come and kill all the vibes. People discouraged and don't know what to do. Endless hate, confusion and uncertainty forecasted for both me and you. Having to work from home, use technology and feel like a fool. You know things are real bad when children start missing going to school. But watch how we rise to the occasion. Prayer meeting on Zoom, online empowerment, nuggets of wisdom, Sunday school on social media. Don't take that out of sight. Hey! Don't forget, lamp and light. So if all that has to be shaken would be shaken, consider that we're still holding on here. Is it that we forgot, didn't understand, or just mistaken? We get some serious blues this year. A thousand times we almost fall, but somehow we could still stand. And I think that means we have a good corner man. You know what? We even went to church and get a frying pan. Whether it was peace that came out of nowhere, or strength we didn't know we had, or joy that came in the morning, we realized that he was there to wipe away every tear. It's kind of funny, but when we know the real reason for the season, and it's not money, it's actually easy to understand. He did not go anywhere. Remember Matthew 14, 27? And be of good cheer. So happy Christmas to all. And to all, do not despair. For the question was already answered. Love is here.
will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day, when at the cross I believe, riches eternal and blessed, supernal from His precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross my Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away. Did you know that chemists love to celebrate Christmas? We even built our own chemistry in the lab. We use chemistry in our daily lives when we cook, clean, use cosmetics or medication, and grow plants just to name a few. Chemistry is often called the central science because of its role in connecting the physical sciences with the life sciences and applied sciences such as medicine and engineering. And if you don't believe me, see, it's on the front cover of all my textbooks, so it must be true. But you know who else should be at the center of our lives? That's right, none other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because He alone is truly worthy and deserving. So as we go about our daily lives, whether we are at school, at work, play, or spending time with our loved ones, let us remember to keep Jesus at the center of our lives. But what does it mean to make Jesus the center of your life? It means that you acknowledge Jesus as the ultimate authority in your life and you voluntarily yield the control of your life to Him. For Jesus to be at the center of your life means He is in control. You no longer desire to independently run your own life, but you surrender your whole self to Jesus and to follow in His lead. The Word of God tells us that we should place our trust in God. He is our source of help, strength, and hope. He rewards those that diligently seek Him. Is there anyone better to put your trust in than our Lord? Isaiah 41 and 10 tells us, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and is safe. So what else can chemists do to celebrate Christmas? Have you ever heard of the periodic table of elements? It is one of the most powerful tools that chemists have for organizing chemical information. It is a tabular array of all the chemical elements that constitute the matter in our physical world. For example, components of these three substances, gold, frankincense and myrrh, can be found in the periodic table. If these sound familiar, that's because the word of God says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Chemists even used the periodic table to send Christmas greetings to their friends. But what does Christmas without Christ mean to the saved chemist? 
Well, if we remove Christ from Christmas, we are basically left with the elements thulium and arsenic. Thulium, dust, and powder are toxic upon inhalation or ingestion and can cause explosions. When bombarded by neutrons, natural thulium becomes radioactive. Arsenic is a notorious poison. It is colorless, odorless, and has a long history of being used for nefarious purposes. It was commonly known as the king of poisons. It is effective as a poison since it has a sweet taste similar to sugar, so victims would be none the wiser. In the same way that sweet, sugary goodness can seem pleasing to our taste, so too can get in caught up in worldly things when we remove Jesus from the center of our lives. Let us remember that the scripture tells us to keep diligently seeking Jesus. Matthew 6 and 33 tells us, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Can you imagine a life without Jesus? A life of loss, pain, heat, emptiness. Loneliness, debt and regret. We would simply drift through life without meaning, purpose, happiness or love. Thankfully, the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He is there for us during our times of loneliness. He covers us during times of uncertainty. He is with us in our joy. He is our comforter, the most loving of friend. He keeps us safe. He is there when we need healing. He is there for us when we lose our way. He came not to punish nor to condemn, but to save. Jesus is the center of my life. What about you? What happened to you there, Foya? Gasa, just last week, I was there carrying a fella called Jesus. How much people rejoicing when they seen the man on the streets? I felt like a boss. This week there, I walk in by myself and nobody had taken me on. They treated me like I'm nothing. Well, partner, it's true. Without Jesus, we are nothing. Yeah.
Honey, why don't I bring all your candy canes on and make them all this big big one for? Because I'm going to tell you about the legend of the candy cane. The candy cane was created by a Christian candy maker in the 17th century who lived in a pagan country. The government could not let the people celebrate Christ's birth. So the candy maker decided to make a candy shaped like a shepherd's crook to be the secret symbol of Jesus and the day of his birth. He included three small stripes to represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one last stripe to represent the life that Jesus willingly sacrificed for our salvation. The candy became a double gift, a sweet treat, and a symbol for the true meaning of Christmas. Look at the candy cane. What do you see? You're looking? Stripes that are red and the blood that was shed for me. Not only for me, you as well. White is for my Savior who is sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord. That's for sure. Turn it around and as staff you will see, Jesus, my shepherd, was born for me. It's just a little Christmas tree, but also, did you know, mm -hmm. it represents our Savior who was born so long ago. Mm -hmm. So, next, next time you eat a candy, candy cake, remember, remember what, what it represents. represents. Remember, eh? don't forget, remember it.